Hey everybody, welcome back. Maul here. Today we're going to do some pulls. It's the first day of the Three Kingdoms event, and uh, just when I think uh, I've got enough heroes, they come out with some great new heroes. So let's look real quick at, at the Queen. She is going to be an incredible um, both attack and defensive hero here. Deals 330 damage to all enemies at average speed. I want to I want to show you what that means. Granted, the attack stat is not quite there, but uh, let's see here. Let's see. So. Where is Sobek? So Sobek is an average speed hit all, and he does 290. And if you've ever been hit by Sobek, you know that that 290 is a lot of damage. So, you know, to see her here at 330 at average speed, it's just a lot of damage. Although the attack stat is uh, about 100... 110 points lower so she'll probably end up hitting uh, about as hard as Sobek and then all allies get 10% mana every time an enemy uses their special skill during four turns and it's a 50% chance to be five turns if she's by herself if there's other family members like on an attack team or actually if you can set up a defense with other family members, uh, this could go out to a 50% chance to last for what, up to six or seven turns. So that's pretty crazy. And it does the same to all family members, which means these ailments and buffs can last for a very long time with this family. And then I, I really like this new, um, I guess, what is this? A status effect the caster gets vengeance for four turns i haven't seen vengeance before but i think it's coming up on some new heroes and it might actually be on this hero that was featured last time um yeah it's it's not called vengeance for erlang shen but it's basically the same thing. Uh, they'll probably re reword his card here. Target nearby enemies get minus 48% attack for three turns. If the effect is removed before the duration ends, the target with the effect suffers 599 damage. So think about it. If you if you put the queen together with Erlang Shen on a team and went into battle against a defense that has dispellers on it, the AI doesn't know not to use the dispel. And so you can basically make the team commit suicide by putting, um, you know, these effects on the defense. So I really do want to pull her, but, you know, I'm not going to go crazy here. I'll get the, uh, I'll get the offers especially there's a really good offer on the website so that's what i got and that's what i'm going to use to do these pulls you know i will say too this four star i don't usually spend a whole lot of attention or spend a lot of time or give a lot of attention to the four star heroes but i have to say that if i pull him i will probably end up putting him on an attack team because the um, at fast speed, look at that attack stat. I mean, he's basically got the stats of a five-star hero. Deals 285 damage to the target. The duration of dispellable status ailments is reset for the target. So on the right team, you know, this he could be very good. I, I, I really like that they're... I think they're starting to come out with four stars that are definitely usable. I see... 
I am terrible with names. I see um, this the healer. What is her name? A lot of her Annabelle. I see her a lot on top 100 alliance attack teams. Um, Dondre was a healer that I used for a long time, and in War of Three Kingdoms, I'm mentioning this now because in War of Three Kingdoms, I generally run out of healers around attack nine, and um, I start to have to dig down deep into the four stars to put together attack teams, and Dondre, uh, of course, Regard is always a classic, he's always good. So it's really nice to see four stars that are usable in in on attack teams. You know, Kale, Kalo, Farron, these these heroes are very usable. Frank is a four star version of Scotty. Or his costume is. So let's come go in here and uh let's do some Polls. We'll save the Three Kingdoms polls for the end. Actually, now let's go ahead and do those right now. There are a bunch of single polls. Let's see if we're going to have any luck here. The War of Three Kingdoms event. It's funny because I just watched Randa Panda's video and she has done almost 300 pulls and only gotten one of the War of Three Kingdoms heroes and I have done probably a similar number and oof, two of these heroes are yellow I wouldn't mind either one of these when he came out last time I, I wasn't that impressed but 475 damage to the target and minor damage to nearby enemies I guess I just didn't register at that with that attack um, stat how hard he's hitting and um, and that vengeance side effect is uh, is great you know I have I don't even know let me look in here so, is in the non-leveled heroes, I don't scroll through here very often, except when I finish a hero and I need to pull them out. So, I've got Zhuzhliang here. And I've got Lubu twice here. So that's three. And then getting up here into the ones that I've started working on. I've got Tao Tao. I've got Zhuzhliang here. We've got Guan Yu and in finished heroes I've got Lubu so that's what six and Zhang Fei so seven this event is by far my my best event I just get I'm way above odds in in this portal so, here's to hoping that the, that luck continues. I I was working on um, Guan Yu when I pulled um, Stain Tongue, so he got paused. But I'm very excited to get a strong green team together. My greens have been lackluster. For quite a while. I've got good support heroes in green, but my best hitters in green right now are El Nadaha and Canel. So, 
Canel doesn't, you know, her second hit is phenomenal, but her first hit is just not good enough. And you, you need them to, to hit hard the first time out. And El Madaha is a really good one-off. Ooh, General Yin. I'm actually glad to get him. The, the three-star event heroes, I know I'm going to pull him a million times, but the first time... It's it's always good to get to see him, or I mean to see any of the of the three stars. The new event heroes are so good compared to the old heroes, and yeah, getting him just derailed my train of thought. But we'll see here. Oh yeah, my my green attack team has really been lacking, and. I I don't like having no answer for having a you know g going up against an alliance that's using blue tanks now. So with Miriam and Midnight getting nerfed, you don't see quite as many, but you are seeing blue tanks, and so I'm I'm glad that I've gotten a couple of good green heroes recently. But we are not seeing any luck here. We're getting close to the end of day one and day one is when I usually have my most the best luck so can't really wait another hour but I'm sure there'll be other good offers so I'll probably wait till close to the end Ashgar no Seeing the yellow pop up. Gets my hopes up. Nothing. Alright, well. We do have 50 coins that we got from the website. So I have pulled Himeros already. I think she's going to be really good. She prioritizes Dispel, which is a really important skill. So I see a, lo a lot of videos about people pulling her and they don't seem too excited. But uh, I would be, I, I am very excited to have her because every everything about her special is useful you know some people some some heroes they do one thing really well or whatnot but not every part of the hero is useful this hero so when she's by herself um, gets plus 20 percent increase or all solo heroes get plus 20% increase for any heal received. That's extremely useful. Uh, so, uh, I mean, 20%, that makes even an average healer a really good healer. Then, innate resistance against ailments that block special skills is a absolutely a great passive. So, that's good. She's very fast speed. Her attack stat is over a thousand. She deals 460 damage, which is a, a ton. Prioritizes it to spell. So if you've got Ludwig or um, Black Knight, anyone like that, uh, she's going to dispel them before she hits them. So that taunt will be gone. And then she'll hit hard. That is such a good skill to have. Um, the only one I have right now that does that is 
uh, costumes the shot, which I use her on war attack teams because of that skill, even though she's, you know, an older hero. And, and she doesn't hit very hard. I'm, I literally use her just because she prioritizes that dispel. It would be really nice to have a stronger hero that can do that. So, um, and then the other hero that I have is Louie, who I have on a very effective team because Louie hits all and leaves the defense down. So every hero that I have that prioritizes dispel is a key part of an attack team and then caster and nearby allies special skills deal an additional 40 percent damage for three turns so you put her attack teammates next to her like pangi or uh, sobek or uh, master lepus there's a you know anybody that you put next to her is gonna with that extra 40 percent is gonna just do a ton of damage especially with never having to worry about taunt or or any defensive buff like that. So let's keep this video rolling. I could separate these into two videos, but let's just go ahead and, and do this all in one video. Let's see if we have any better luck here. Now, I've had good luck. I mean, I've pulled him Maros twice. So, I could actually make a team of, of her, but um, I do really, I really want Cupido. So I was debating whether I should save these coins or continue to use them here. And, you know, I, I looked at the Springvale heroes that are coming out and they're just not that impressive, in my opinion. You know, I haven't seen them in action, so I could be missing something. I've seen people talking about um, the new green one, but I just went and looked at the llama, and I don't think he's that great. And yeah, he's fast, but he doesn't do, he doesn't leave defense down or, or anything. He's, he's not one that can be paired with somebody. And, and create synergy, so. I mean, I have um, Costume Master Lepus that I pulled during the last Springvale event, and I still haven't leveled him, specifically because having a straight up damage dealer is good, but they just don't lend themselves well to synergy. They're always the last shot, and when it... Oh, good. First five star out of all these pulls. Let's see if this is going to lead us into some better luck. There's quite a few pulls without seeing anything. So, like I was saying, um, I haven't... Um, I haven't leveled Lepus yet, but we'll see what my blue teams look like. I may end up leveling him soon, but I did get Milena from the Soul Exchange, so I will definitely be leveling her before I level up Master Lepus. Well, what are we at here? Is that... Let's see, we're at almost 20 pulls here, 15 on the other. So 35 pulls. Alright, come on, Cupido. Oh, Sarnia. Well, I usually end up with a follow on five star event hero after I pull a season one within about 20 pulls so let's see if we get that here come on cupido I'm 
afraid I'm going to pull. What's his name? Him. Fatholomus. You know, he's he might be deceptively good because he is a a heart. He's a hitter, healer. At slow speed, though, I'm just not a fan of slow heroes. If you've watched my other videos, I pulled Max twice. I mean, it seems like I should be happy that I pulled Max twice with, I think, 30 pulls. But it's Max. It's just really hard to use slow heroes. So, at this point, I'm sure everyone has heard the, about the second limit break that's coming out. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on that. My initial, my first gut reaction to that was obviously not good. The community is up in arms about it, and I think, um, I think for good reason, but... I decided to try and objectively look at this from all angles and you know I've said this before I think too too many people are too hard on boy Zerola I just cannot get away from her uh, small giant slash Zynga is a company you know their first priority is to make money like any other company you know, I've never walked into Home Depot and gotten upset that the cordless drills are 20 volt now and they used to be 18, which is literal power creep. You know, everything, every business comes out with new and better stuff and every business sells stuff. And, you know, you got to decide whether you like the game enough to to keep playing it and I do I like this game and I think that I think that they are building something here when I try and look objectively at it the you know having to summon aethers is something that is very targeted at the whales which I am not I I do a lot of summons but and I have quite a built roster but that's because I have, you know, a substantial entertainment budget that I use on this game. And it's, it's, but I'm on a budget. Like, I'm not one of the people who just pulls and pulls and pulls until they get everything. So, you know, I'm, I have to make a choice like everyone else is going to about how I feel about that second limit break. And the fact that you basically have to pay for it. Wow, we are going to end up doing 75 pulls with nothing here. And so I think when I really look at it, it is probably good for the health of the game and the community if you go about understanding where you fit into it. Because... Up to this point, there's a, been, there's a lot of players like me who have been playing this game for almost five years now, and this game was, when it started, it started like many games where if you put a little bit of money into it, you know, a hundred bucks a month, sometimes two hundred bucks a month in the beginning, you could literally have every single hero from every event and every hero of the month, and you could compete for that top spot like worldwide number one as the game develops and makes money and kind of takes on a entity of its own you're seeing a almost like a social class hierarchy develop where the the rich the the, the whales the people who are in those top 100 alliances that will spend basically an unlimited amount of money they are 
funding this game for the rest of us. And if I can just be content knowing that I'm going to put some money towards doing pulls because I enjoy that and I like getting new heroes and playing with them. But I'm not going to be getting doing the second limit break. And as a pay-to-play player, let's do these last two pulls. All right. And nothing. 75 pulls with nothing. See, my luck's not always good. So... I am going to go into this with the mentality that I am not going to be um, doing the, the second limit breaks. So if you look here at raids, uh, no, not here. What am I doing? So I'm sure everyone knows this. If you don't know this, you can look, you can hit the, the little question mark on the enemy raid and see what they use to beat your team or to what they use to lose against you. So if you look at my team here, this is a team of heroes that are very hard to get, my defense team here. And it is really aggravating for me to look here and see that I lost against uh, we got regard here a four star Fiscaro, who is just a hero of the month we got another hero of the month we got a non-costume season one and a non-costume panther so this person is probably at level 70 they're probably free to play or or very cheap to play and i'm spending money and they can beat me just because obviously, I mean, they, just being realistic, they must have gotten a great board, right? Because this team is a pretty crazy defense. And, but it's, it's aggravating to me to see this. And um, you're not going to see this anymore with the, the second limit break. The pay to play players that pay a lot of money they're gonna get the second limit break for all of their heroes and they're gonna have defenses where people like this are not going to be able to get lucky even a lucky board is not going to be able to kill their team with those second limit breaks on them and i mean if you're paying that much money you should be able to expect results from that i do I do believe that, you know, if I'm paying a lot more money than this person is, I do expect that my team's going to be better, that I don't just get wiped out by four-star heroes. So, so Zynga has to make money. And if the top, let's say 1% of the players are going to fund this game for us, for the rest of us, so that they'll keep creating new heroes and making this game richer, making the game experience, the synergy better. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm willing to give up the ability to compete in, you know, the top. Well, I'm not in a top 100 alliance because I don't want to compete there. And, you know, I, I have hit global number one before. And that will probably never happen again as the second limit breaks come about. But I'm okay with that. If I if I just accept being, you know, competing in that middle of the the road area, then the game is still very fun. You know, I'm my alliance still competes against other alliances that once the second limit break comes out, uh you know, the alliances that we're competing against are not going to have people who are doing the second limit breaks either because the, you know, any alliance that has a bunch of members that are doing the second limit breaks are going to be in the top 100 alliance. So, you know, there's a natural 
this game naturally sifts people out or alliances and and places people accordingly so um you know if you can get past being frustrated that you're not going to be able to compete with the people that pay high dollar amounts then i think the game is still going to be actually a much better game it's going to be more enjoyable there's more five star heroes if you just pay a little bit of money and you know get maybe one cool new hero a month it still adds to the enjoyment of the game plus they're adding things that are better that are more than just the the pvp of war which is probably what everybody's here for but i'm glad to see monster island being developed like i i want to see more ability to coordinate with my alliance and accomplish missions and i just see more depth to the game so i guess you know looking at it from that standpoint now there's the one last thing that i will say and i am going to send them an email about this is there are other games that are similar and they will separate players on different servers so that the the people who are true pay to play could have their own server and they can compete against each other and then the the pay to play um you know if if they had maybe four different servers then the pay to play who are not whales like myself could compete and and potentially you know reach that number one spot within our group and then you could have cheap to play and even a free to play server where they don't offer like if you look on the side of my screen here i haven't bought any of these offers the the offer that i bought was the one from the website and so i've got all of these offers stacked up almost into the middle of the screen on with this one here and you know, if you could choose to be on a server that's free to play, there's there'd be no offers on there. And if you know, if you're cheap to play, maybe an offer like this will show up. But the offers that are going to come later for thirty dollars or a hundred dollars, those won't show up. I think that would be a great solution for um, for Zynga to consider to allow people to choose their server choose the level that they want to compete and the level that they want to play at so that they can customize their experience and not feel like you know the problem the, the thing that after i say all of this the reality is i'm going to get wrecked by people who have double limit broken heroes and it's going to put pressure internal pressure on me to want to make my heroes better you know i have I have some great heroes here. I have a team with Jove and Anne on it. And right now, that team's also got Sobek. Um, you know, there's gonna, I'm going to feel a lot of pressure to double limit break those heroes. And, um, but I'm, I'm going to control that because I, I know where I have the most fun in this game. And, uh, and I know what my budget is, so... I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Um, most people are overwhelmingly against it, but it's going to happen. And let me know if you think that uh, that it, when you look at things objectively, if there is going to be a sifting out, sort of a sorting out of where people fall, and if you can actually play and have fun at that level, or you know, is it the type of thing where if they keep making everything, making you have to pay for everything that you're just going to rage quit. I've seen some postings on their website of people who are rage quitting saying that, you know, it's all about greed and it's all about making money. And while they're not wrong, I just don't think that in this in this world that we can expect a business to not prioritize making money so yeah, if they can make most of their money off of the whales and let them have their own game experience uh, uh, you know I think that works too 
uh, we'll see. So let me know your thoughts. Um, leave a comment and, you know, this is a discussion that's going to be going on long into the future. So I hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.